A Melbourne physicist uh, has made history today, becoming the first Aussie woman to ever travel to the edge of space. Hi. Elaine Hyde isn't an astronaut, she's just a regular mum of five, and she paid to be part of a six person crew, minus the kids, aboard <laughs> Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin rocket on its 10th human flight. They touched down in Texas early this morning after a 10 minute trip. I think I left half myself up there. I feel like I'm still there. It's a wonder. I felt like I was in a cradle that you just made for me and I was so safe. I was set on the River Nile with you watching over me. <laughs> wow. The space traveller herself joins us now. Would you please welcome the lady? Hi, everyone. You must feel like you haven't quite come back down to Earth yet. For us Earthlings, what was it like? Describe the experience. Well, this morning I flew to space <gasps> and I haven't slept on it yet. <laughs> so it's still quite fresh in my mind. You know, space is like a place that we all have to go. I went and caught a glimpse of it, like the curtains had just been flung open and then they were just closed and I was pulled right back down to Earth. I truly think it felt quite normal to be up there. <laughs> so humans definitely, definitely go explore. It's a place that is a natural place for us to be, actually. You, you of course, are, are used to being up in the sky. You're, you're a licensed pilot yourself. Is this like a totally different thing? So the sky has always called me and particularly the stars. And so being in space was my goal from the beginning. It is a totally different thing. When you are in an airplane or an aircraft, you are flying through air. That is abundantly clear when you're in space. You see the blue colour of the, of the um, atmosphere and you're quite far from it. So it is like nothing like flying a plane. Did you have to do any training before you went up there? Yes, um, I did prepare myself. I went to a few zero-G flights, which prepared me for the sensation of zero-G so that I wouldn't be overwhelmed by that. And that I also um, did a lot of mental preparation, and that was being mindful of how, you know, um, distracting thoughts that would distract me from the... Um, gravity of the mission, so to speak. Wow, this is great news for me because I would love to go to space. Samuel thinks I'm insane. Yep. But I well, always... Samuel thinks you're in space already. I think actually. you're in space today. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I'm listening from Elaine and it's like I, everyone should be able to do it. But Elaine, my concern, 10 minutes, that sounds like it's too short a time because I want to stare at that beautiful Earth for a very long time, maybe an hour. Were you ready to come down and if you got the chance, would you go back? I want to stay up there permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes is not enough, but it's all they can give us because if they gave us any longer, they'd have to shoot us higher and then the G's coming down would be too great. But I, I do want to go up again and I think you should make it your goal to go up because once you go up, this is what happens to you. Your perspective changes. You are shown the entire world in its entirety right before you and it's a really stunning sight that opens up your entire imagination to a new world of possibilities. And that is something worth pursuing. Elaine, congratulations. Special memories. What a story, what an experience. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you all for having me. Wow. Busy mums will do anything to get a bit of me time. Ten <laughs> minutes apiece, baby. You, you're, you're going? You're not oh, you're no, going? No, I'm going. I'm Are in as going? well. Nah. Guys, I'll we should all go you. together. Yes. Outside broadcast in space. That's yes. good.